In this episode, we will figure out why a team of hitmen from Mexico spent months looking for a man in America, then took his life while he was at the mall eating yogurt with his wife. The name of the victim in this story is Chapa. Chapa lived in Texas with his wife and three kids. They appeared to be a regular family, but if you took a closer look, you would know that Chapa wasn't just anybody. He was once the personal lawyer for the head of the Gulf Cartel. In the early 2000s, American agents put Chapa on their radar. He was just too rich and he knew too many people that were certified criminals. Chapa owned multiple properties, including a ranch in Mexico, where he raised horses and rare and expensive bulls. He once worked for a man named Osil. Osil just happened to be an ex-Mexican drug lord and the leader of the Gulf Cartel in Los Cetas. Osil once worked as a mechanic and then he graduated into the cartel by taking the life of an enemy of the cartel. Chapa knew all the players in the Gulf Cartel and since he was a lawyer, he knew even more. Because of his connections and education, he was able to traffic drugs himself and offer legal defense to the people that trafficked drugs. After Osil was captured, Chapa became an informant and because of his inside knowledge, he knew which traffickers had real money. He ended up telling investigators who were the valuable and rich traffickers. To truly cripple an organization, they have to get to the money. Since Osil was in custody and decided to cooperate, in 2010, Chapa brokered a $50 million deal Osil made with the American government. Osil trusted Chapa and gave him control and responsibilities while he was in prison. In 2011, Chapa moved to South Lake, Texas, where he lived with his wife and three kids in a huge million dollar house. Let's go back to a time before Osil was captured. Before he was captured, he was hiding out in Mexico. A corrupt police officer approached Chapa and told him that he knew where Osil was hiding but would keep his mouth shut for a price. Chapa went back and told Osil about this dirty cop and the proposition for blackmail. That same police officer then disappeared and was never seen again. His wife and kids looked for him for years but never knew what happened to their father and husband. Now, let's talk about a man named Rodolfo. Rodolfo was the leader of the Beltran Leva cartel and one day Rodolfo decided that he wanted to cause the death of Chapa, the lawyer. So he put a hit team together. Amongst the hit team are ex-Mexican police officers, the father, the son, and the cousin. Jose purchased six GPS tracking devices that he used regularly during this mission. The tracking devices were provided by a company that had an account under Jose's real name. On March 5, 2013, Jesus and his son, Campaño, took a drive from Mexico to the United States. They arrived at their destination of Grapevine, Texas. Jose rented a few apartments where the team would live while they continued to plan their mission. Jose would use his real name and phone number to rent these safe houses. He would then give the managers of the rental properties permission for Jesus to pick up the keys. Law enforcement would later show a photo lineup to the managers who would then positively identify Jesus and Campaño as the men that stayed at those locations. The team purchased two cars with cash and rented four other vehicles. The people that sold the vehicles would later identify Jesus and Campaño as the men that purchased the cars. These cars were later used to track and stalk Chapa and his family members. Since they used six different vehicles, Chapa nor his family was suspicious while they were being followed. The hit team traveled with the GPS trackers in their cars so when they spot Chapa or his family members, they could easily put the tracker on the vehicles. In court, this worked against them because investigators looked at the GPS history and it also showed where the hit team was and what time they were there. 
as on March 29, 2013, the tracker showed that the hit team traveled to Chopper's house at 10 a.m. and again at 3 p.m. Then again on March 30th, March 31st, and on April 1st. On April 13th, Campagno crossed the border into America and his phone number began pinging on cell towers in Rio Grande Valley. On April 29th into May, the men received multiple pictures from the wildlife trail cameras that they installed at strategic locations. These pictures included the Range Rover owned by Chopper. It also included the pictures the hit team used to test out the cameras to make sure they work. These pictures included the cars that they rented and more information that would later be used against them at trial. They finally located one of Chopper's family members that lived in Texas. They would then secretly place a tracking device on her car and track her whereabouts. When they finally located Chopper, they set up wildlife trail cameras around his driveway to learn his habits. After telling Rodolfo they have located Chapa, Rodolfo sent two hitmen from Mexico to meet up with the surveillance team. These two men were ex-military men that have done this before. Code names were Clorox and Captain. On May 22, 2013, while Chapa's Range Rover was parked at Walmart, Jesus and Campano put a GPS tracker on his SUV. At 6 p.m., the GPS tracker showed that Chapa arrived at South Lake Town Square. At 6.05 p.m., a different GPS tracker showed that Jesus and Campano was in the same parking lot. The South Lake Town Square cameras showed that Chapa and his wife walked to a shoe store at 6.15 p.m. and got back to their SUV at 6.46 p.m. Chapa hopped into the passenger seat and his wife went to put her shopping bags in the trunk. At the same time, a white Toyota Sequoia pulled up. Clorox hopped out the Sequoia and 10 seconds later hopped back in. Within that 10 seconds, Chapa became a victim of homicide. Investigators believe a personal feud between the two men that dated back decades was really the motive behind this hit. Now, the victim was an attorney for a rival Mexican drug cartel who later turned U.S. government informant. He was living a quiet life in South Lake when he was fatally shot in public in 2013. Jesus and Campano waited in the parking lot until law enforcement arrived. The next morning, they returned the rental cars and drove back to Mexico. Law enforcement found the GPS tracker on Chapa's Range Rover at the crime scene. Rodolfo finally got revenge. See, Rodolfo is the son of that crooked cop that tried to blackmail Ocille. And he always believed that Chapa was one of the people responsible for his father's disappearance. He has never been prosecuted for this crime. Jesus, at 60 years old, was sentenced to two life sentences. Jose, at 60 years old, was sentenced to two life sentences plus 20 years. Campano testified for the government and at 33 years old, was sentenced to 20 years in prison. If you enjoyed this content, subscribe to the channel and click on the next video from The Dribble. Peace.